Hey everyone, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Just wait for some people to join me. How long has it been since I've been on here? Who has been in a process? Who's been in a, a season where God has just been doing a Holy Ghost dunk in the secret place and not letting you get up for air? He wants you down in that place. He wants you immersed. It's a fresh baptism of His, of his Spirit. It's a fresh baptism of joy. It's a fresh baptism of of just it's a deliverance it's a it's a it's a freedom it's a things going down to die if you read my word today you know what i'm talking about all our growth fam i see you jumping on good to see you guys love you all i wanted to share something this is more of a um what i feel like is a governmental word to the body of christ it's it's for us right now i want to pray for you guys at the end of this um for eyes to see i want to pray for you guys at the end of this for dreams for visions for God to take you into encounters, for God to take you into to realms of his glory, for God to take you into places where you see behind the veil. This is what I'm praying for today. Very strategic, this word I'm going to release to you guys today. And I want to try to get on here a little bit more. I've been feeling the release of the Lord. I've not felt the release to do many lives this year, probably even for the last year. I've not felt the release to do many lives. I'm going to be coming on doing a lot more. Even felt the Lord tell me to get on and be doing some more where I'm just releasing just the sound releasing worship, releasing just the deep places over the body of Christ. I feel like that's my call. I feel like I'm meant to, I don't know, I want to be like the midwife for the church. I want to just be encouraging you guys to, to go deeper, to hear what the Lord's saying in the hour, not being washed up and just caught up in the narrative. So hopefully this blesses you guys. You guys ready for this? <laughs> I hope you've been doing well. I know this has been a crazy season. This has been a season where it's just felt like God is stripping us back. He is pulling back just layers and he's been wanting to bring us into like such close connection and union with him. Like all other things do not matter in this season. Like this study right here, I, we, this is where Christy and I, we, and, our, and our Landrum as well, but we just worship. It's like, it's just infused with the presence because we know this is a season. We don't want to miss what God is doing. We don't want to miss what God is doing in this hour. We don't want to miss it. I don't, I don't care what emergency there is going on around us. I don't care what diversion and, uh, and distractions the enemy is trying to bring into my life. I don't want to miss that place. I don't want to miss it. So this is one little track that I create. I, it came out of a worship time and I just kind of have it on loop when I, when I pray sometimes. Good to see you guys. Anyway, really good, to, really good to jump on. It's been a long, long time. I want to release this to you guys. Hopefully it's not too much. Um, it's not something I'll turn into a word. It's just, I want to release it here and that's it. Um, I want to share these two dreams. They're very simple dreams, okay? But they speak to the same thing, okay? The first dream, um, I was being chased by the enemy. And this is many months ago. I was being chased by the enemy. It was felt like all night. I was just being pursued by the enemy all night. And he was just chasing after me and chasing after me. And I remember just in the dream saying, I'm done with being chased. I'm done with feeling like I've just been running and surviving. I'm done with feeling like I don't have any power. I feel powerless. I feel like there is nothing there's no card I could play right now. I, I, got, I got nothing to bring to the table. I'm just constantly feeling like I am like a leaf in the wind in this season. What's taking place in the world, like what's taking place, the chaos and the, the crisis, like the, the different news that comes out every single day. I'm just a leaf in the wind. I can't change anything. And that's exactly what I was feeling like in this dream. And as soon as I said those words, I saw Jesus stand before me. And he was just, just dressed in white and he said, Look at me. Look at me, Nate. Look at me. Can you see me? And I just stopped in my tracks and I looked at him and suddenly everything else did not matter. It just did not matter to me at all. And he said, this is a season where I'm teaching my church to look at me and nothing else. This is a season that I'm revealing who I am to the body of Christ in a fresh way. And then he began to download to me all this revelation I can't share with you all around about Jehoshaphat. Uh, maybe I can share with you some other time. I might do a, a ver like a, a part two of this video about the seven year cycles and seasons and the Jehoshaphat army that God's raising up. And uh, the, and a lot of that's where that Jeho the whole Joseph thing came out of. You read that Joseph word came out of that moment as well. And Lord really began to speak to me about we're entering a season or a cycle of time that he 
was going to prepare the body of Christ and he was raising up a reformational army to reform not just the church but he was going to he's going to send out a Jehoshaphat army which means God has judged God has governed he's releasing them into the high places of society he's going to release the body of Christ into influential places over the next seven year cycle from 2022 to 2029 uh, to thwart the enemy's plans, thwart the plans of the elites and people that are setting things in place. You don't have to be a conspiracy theorist to see it. It's very obvious. Open your eyes. And he was going to say, I'll talk about that another time. I won't ruin it. But I just want to talk today about what God is doing in you. And I want to pray over you to have dreams and visions for you to see the things that God's doing. The second dream was it happened about three or four times where over a week period, I would... Uh, the, the third and the fourth one were different, but the first two in the dream, I had an eagle face and eagle eyes and I knew it. It was like I couldn't see my face, but I knew I had eagle face and eagle eyes and I was looking and everywhere I looked, it was like looking down a telescope, okay? And I could see really far away and I could see, you know, all the way around. It was like my, my view. You ever seen those cameras um, where it's like, you know, the I'm not sure what they call it now, but it's just like you see really far away and you can see the whole like globe kind of thing. It was like that. And everywhere I looked, I could see, I could see. And that happened twice in dreams. And the, the third and the fourth time, I woke up seeing the eyes of an eagle staring at me like crisp. These yellow, these glassy yellow eyes are staring at me. The fourth one had like a tinge of blue in them. And they were just staring at me. And I said, like, hey, Lord, what are you trying to say? And he said, where are my eagle eye? Where, where is my eagle-eyed army? Where are my where are my prophetic eagles? Because this is the hour that my eagles need to arise to see. Because in the first dream, I didn't share this. The Lord began to speak to me about this was the season of the revealing of Christ. We're in a season of the revealing of Christ. And he said to me, who are the ones who are showing my people how to look beyond the storm? Who are the ones that are showing my people how to look beyond the current circumstances to see what is on the other side of this? And then he said to me, Nate, we need to, he said to me something along the lines of, we need the apocalypse prophets. We need the apocalypse prophets. And if you know, if you know what the word, you know, we, we've always uh, the word apocalypse. We man, you can think of all the craziness that you you want regarding that word. People see it as like doomsday, the end of the world, all this kind of stuff. That's what we kind of relate the apocalypse to. But do you know that the Greek word apocalypto, where that comes from? Uh, referring to revelations, referring to the end of days, referring to all that kind of stuff, actually means this, okay? You just want to hear this? It means to uncover, to reveal, to bring light to, to make manifest, to bring, make the immaterial visible, to make known, to make manifest, to disclose what was before unknown, previously non-existent, coming into being, to take off the cover, and of course, the revealing of Christ, the revealing of Christ. Like my dream, he said, look, here I am. Can you see me? And then he said something else to me. He said, do you see me pursuing you even more in this season? Do you see me chasing after you? And that is a word for the church. Do you see me chasing after you more than the things that, the, like more than all the different things you can name right now that you know is going on in the news? Can you see what I'm doing more than what the enemy is trying to set up and do? Because if you don't, you're going to align with the things on the news that the prophets of Baal are prophesying and they are only getting behind the enemy's agenda and his prophecies. Or are you going to line up with what the word of God says by looking at Jesus? When you look at Jesus, you see the future. When you look at Jesus, you see what is to come. When you look at Jesus, you see hope and you can see beyond the storm. And right now the church needs to align with his face again. We need to, we need to look for his gaze in all of this. Many of us have been down and out and broken and in survival. Like I know circumstances are done. I know that, but I'm telling you something. Our eyes matter. And where we've been looking matters. And this has been a season that God has been saying, who are those who will find me? Who are those who will look to me? Who are those who will, who will not wake up in the morning looking at the news report that, that, that the enemy is putting out? Who are those who look and see the, what I have to say? Who are those who be who be searching for me? Who are those who give themselves to a season of in my, in my presence, in the secret? secret place where they're immersing, they're, they're dying to all the things that they, they want to go and do and try to do to try to try to pre, pre, like there's even just the earthly side of preparing. Who are those who who will come into my throne room and hear what I have to say so they can properly prepare, so they can properly reveal strategies, so they can properly know what I'm doing, so they can then point the church and the world to the hope, to the hope, to the future, to what is coming, the greater glory that is being revealed to the harvest 
to the revival that is already beginning to stir. Who are those people? And that's the conviction of this hour. That's the conviction of this hour that I've just been absolutely consumed by. Christy and I have been consumed by. I want to read this to you. All right. The revealing season reveals a lot of things. Matthew 10, 26. So do not be afraid of them for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed and nothing that will not be made known. Uh, I think of Jeremiah 33, 3, uh, call unto me or so, show you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. Revelation, uh, I think it's Revelation 2, verse 4, verse 1. I think so. It says, an angel said to me, come up here and I'll show you what is to come. And then we obviously know that the, we obviously know the scripture about, you know, that God conceals. It's the glory of kings to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to, to unveil them. And we're in an hour that God is speaking to the church and he's saying, who who will be those who go after my presence and my face? And who are those who look at me and in that place then be able to see what I'm doing? It's only through his presence. It's only through intimacy that we're able to see what he's doing. Outside of intimacy, we are, we are cut off from being able to see what God's doing. We are cut off. We are unable to see what God's doing outside of the secret place. This is an hour that the body of Christ needs to stop trying to just get on the hamster wheel and hustle because we're trying to make sure that we're getting things and make sure we're trying to keep the bank, you know, bankroll going in churches. We've got to pay the bill. Like all that stuff is natural. You've got to do it. But I'm telling you something. If we pursue the secret place in this hour, we will not only see God provide. We'll not only see God do what, he, you know, take care of the things we need to, need to take care of. But there is something he's going to do that he's going to fill us with hope. And we're going to release hope into our congregations and our people and those all around us. Because we are tethered to hope. We're tethered to the King of glory. We're tethered to Jesus. Jesus again. That is our role in this hour. Luke 2.35, and the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and the sword will pierce your own soul. This is a season, God. It's, just, it's a revealing of hearts. It's revealing like where, what are you aligned with? Are you about Jesus? Whew. This is a season God's exposing the hand of the enemy. The enemy will keep being found out. It looks like he's winning, but he's not. The light is being shun in dark places right now. And then Romans 8.18, I consider that our present sufferings are not worthy comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. The enemy only wants you to see what's on the headlines. He wants you to look at all the things threatening your kids where you can't take them to school, where you can't do all these things that you used to be able to do. He wants you to feel like you were backed into a corner. But the Lord says, no, I'm raising up a people who will push back. Where the enemies try to say to them, this is the way it's going to go. We are the ones who write the future. Why are we not writing it right now? Because we're looking at the news. We're looking at all those things. And God is saying, shift your perspective, eagle-eyed army, body of Christ. Look beyond, look beyond. You need to see past the storm to know how to navigate the now. The revealing of Jesus enables us to see past the storm. It releases peace and hope. It wakes up the apathetic, the sleeping. It releases answers and blueprints. It connects us to heaven. It unleashes God's heart. Uh, you know, maybe you're, you, you know, in culture and different things. You're wanting to influence those, those areas of injustice. It shows us how to tackle like things like abortion. It shows us how we're meant to stand up for our cities and how to be a good dad, how to be a good husband. It shows us those things. It releases re revival because Jesus is revival. Man, I'm getting all hot. I need, <laughs> whew, man, it's the presence of the Lord. God is just so, so wanting us to see him right now. He's wanting us to not just encounter him. He's wanting us to then reveal him through our own encounter. So God, right now, I feel like today, I want to quickly pray for you because I don't want this to go on too long. I feel like simply God wants to do a few things, Okay. I uh, heard him say he wants to reset hearts and evict fear, number one. He wants you to get your voice back. He wants to remove the fear of man and the fear of the things going on in the world, the chaos. Because I know so many on here, I'm just sensing like you're feeling it as well. Like you, you, you're carrying, you're carrying years of anxiety and the unknown. And the Lord wants to connect you with future again. A people without future will live in uncertainty. A people without future, disconnected from future, those who see no hope, They'll live in a place of sinking sand. 
And I feel like so many, if that's you, you're saying, yeah, Nate, I'm living in sinking sand. I can't see past tomorrow. I can't see past this afternoon. I don't know where I'm going. My family's been unsettled. There are people on here even just been feeling like nomads in this season. I understand that one because there has been such a shift and a transition that God's doing as well. But you feel like, where is the future for my kids? I don't even see the future for my kids. There is such a weight of responsibility, such a weight and pressure on you. I break that now in the name of Jesus. Just what the enemy's tried to bombard you and torment you in this season season. We're going to pray over dreams and that for tormented as well soon. But I just thank you, Father, right now that you are rebuke. We just rebuke fear. You're removing fear. Perfect love casts out all fear. Father, we thank you. We're getting back future today. We ask you, Holy Spirit, that you flush out lies. You flush out lies. Detox us from demonic bondage, Lord God. Untangle us from culture. Untangle us from the news that we've been ingesting. I feel like right now, I just ask for deliverance. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would deliver every single person on here from every demonic spirit, oppression, torment, and lying spirit. Unclean spirits come out of them now in the name of Jesus that's been resting on them. That those things that have been hanging around them, those surveilling spirits, things that have been hanging around you, trying to keep you in cycles, keep you in places of bondage because you've been listening to the things that the world has been vomiting and and just regurgitating the same fear. And the Lord says he wants you to be separate from that. It's the spirit of holiness being released right now. It's the spirit of holiness being released right now to separate you from that. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. I command you, come out of that right now. Come out of that. I command that every single demonic spirit, you listen to me. You right now, get off them. That spirit of oppression, I see you. I see that. I see you like trying to attach to people's minds. I command you, leave now in the name of Jesus. By the sound of my voice, in Jesus' name, you leave. You go now in Jesus' mighty name. If you've been feeling like even just something just lift as I do that, or you're feeling like something just begins, the, the enemy is leaving. He cannot have any rights. Rebuke where he's been trying to torment you. Rebuke where he's been trying to sink his claws into you with fear. We rebuke it. It has no authority. It has no authority. You're covered in the blood of Jesus. You're a, you're, this is your, you're a new creation. You don't need to put up with this kind of stuff. You don't need to put up with demonic bondage. That stuff is a violation. So we rebuke it now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for every single entanglement in the spirit, every tie, every single tie, every word that's been spoken and uttered that is in connection with fear and that has accepted the fear we sever now in the name of Jesus. If you know that you've been speaking and regurgitating the fear of the hour, I just encourage you to say, I I cut off the fear that I've been in partnership with. I cut off the things that have caused me to be blind in a season of sight and eagle eagle vision. God, I thank you right now that you're awakening up the church to see clearly and to see what you're doing in Jesus' mighty name. Yeah, fear go, fear go, fear go, fear go. Thank you, Lord. Fear must leave now in the name of Jesus. Now I want to quickly pray over you to see. I want to pray over that your eyes would, would get clarity, that you begin to encounter the Lord again in a fresh way. The Lord told me he wanted me to simply impart dreams and visions. I remember Benny Hinn telling me years ago to do this. And I've been seeing such incredible power and such incredible results from this. So I want to do this. Romans, Romans 1, 11 to 12. Uh, Romans 1, 11 says, I long to see you so that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to make you strong. What is the, what is the spiritual gift I want to pray for you today? It's dreams, visions, and blueprints. Dreams, visions, and blueprints. Dreams, visions, and blueprints. Can I ask you one more question? Do you feel like you've been in a dry spell of dreams, visions, and blueprints? Just write it on here. Say, yeah, Nate, that's been me. I've been in a a dry spell of dreams, visions, and blueprints. I've just not had any dreams, visions, and blueprints. I feel like it's been very murky. I feel like there's just been no clarity about my own personal direction, but also just what's going on in the world. What's going on in the world? Today, it's Holy Spirit that's going to give the gift, but I'm going to to pray it. I'm going to release that to you, okay? It doesn't come from me. It comes from the Holy Spirit. I want to release that over you today, okay? You ready for this? Just put your hands out. Remember this. It doesn't come from me. I'll say that one more time. Holy Spirit, thank you. You're the gift giver. You're the gift giver. You're the gift giver. Lord, I'm... Remove blindfolds now. Remove blindfolds now in Jesus' name. 
a deaf and dumb spirit. Get off that person now in Jesus' name. Get off them now in the name of Jesus. Remove veils. Remove every single, every single hindrance of sight, spiritual sight be removed now in the name of Jesus. Give eyes to see in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I ask for dreams. Lord, I ask that you'd awaken the dreams of your people again. Because this is an hour that you're wanting us to see what you're doing. This is an hour you want us to hear what you're saying, to know where you're going. So Lord, I ask for dreams to be stirred up again. For those who've been tormented in the night, I break that assignment now in Jesus' mighty name. That assignment can no longer exist. There's some people on here that you've been having even demonic experiences in your house. Uh, someone's, one of them's to do with your kids, but just seeing dark figures and stuff, you know it's the enemy. And right now, I feel like the Lord just wants you to take authority of your home again. It's been a season where you felt powerless, so it's, it's almost like there's been just uh, feeling like you just kind of put up with a bunch of this stuff because you're not really sure. You feel like you've lost your authority. You feel like this is a day that the Lord's saying, pick up your sword again. Evict every single demonic influence that's been trying to come in through media, through news, through all those things, even TV shows, speaking the same junk, weird dreams, warfare dreams, all those things. Yeah, we right now, Lord, ask them to be replaced by dreams of clarity, dreams of encounter, and dreams of revelation in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I ask for visions in the day. Lord, I ask for, for, for those who've been even feeling stopped up in their prophetic gifts Lord, in the spiritual gifts, I ask for them to flow again. And Lord, I ask for a release of the blueprints, release of what is to come in Jesus' mighty name. Blueprints, let them come now. The clarity you've been needing, the direction you've been needing. To be able to see, I feel like there are people, you're going you're gonna to hear things going on in the news and you're going to see the flip of it. You're going you're gonna to experience the Lord speaking the flip of it and you're going to have this strong conviction. No, the Lord is saying this and you're going to speak it. And it's going to break fear off people that has been living underneath that fear. And the last thing I wanted to declare over you, you're an eagle-eyed people. You are an eagle-eyed people, says the Lord. You're an eagle-eyed people. It's time to soar again. It's time to come up higher again. It's time to come up out of all of the deception, the lies, and the fear. It's time to see past the storm. It's time to see past the storm. That's what eagles do. They, they see past it. They soar above it. They actually use the storm to, to, to elevate them. It's time that we step into that same flow of the Spirit, that same air vent, that same rhythm of the Spirit. So Lord, I ask right now just for an awakening, for a deliverance, for a healing, and for an elevating and opening of eyes of every single person watching this and every single person who will watch this and a release of peace. If you need peace right now, let me just release peace. Holy Spirit, thank you for your shalom peace. <sighs> Being released of this broadcast in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I ask that you would just cause us to step into our greatest days of effectivity for the body of Christ, for the kingdom. That we'll not be in sleep. We'll not ignore the times. That we know how to prepare. But God, we need first to have our sight connected again. So we ask for that today in Jesus' mighty name. Wow. I hope that blessed you guys. <laughs> I hope that blessed you guys. Like I said, I'll be coming on a lot more regularly. I've been feeling this stirring. The second part of this, I'm gonna be sharing about the seven year timeline that God showed me in that dream. So I'll share that with you guys soon. Seven year timeline, it's gonna be a little bit more strategic in terms of uh, the different topics the Lord spoke to me about and what he's wanting us to do to prepare and different things. Um, Gilad Ros uh, Rosinger, who is Radiant Israel, him and I will be doing a live together at some point in the next few weeks talking about the Joseph anointing, talking about the, uh, the perfect storm and talking about what God's calling us to do and I'm going to speak a lot of hope and, and, and we've been feeling, we've been praying on this for like over a month. We've been feeling like there's going to be a crazy glory released. So make sure we get on there. Hey, I can see all our Grow fam. How you guys doing? <laughs> I'm going to jump on over in the group soon. So love you guys. Make sure you share this with your friends and I will talk to you guys soon. Love you all. Bye.